throw some plastic on the floor, and get ready. Time to learn to paint with your elk calling, y'all. Kick the tires and light the fires. On today's show, part of learning to paint with your elk calls, we're going to talk about your call of palette, your setup canvas, and call scenarios in a way the only the elk bros do. You won't hear this anywhere else. So if your elk buddies or elk buddettes aren't listeners, this is one episode you might want to share. So put on that camo smock and grab those elk calls. Time to paint, baby. Those topics along with our elk bros shout outs and questions from our elk bros mailbox. So my friends, pull up a chair, adjust your volumes just right, and welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting, brought to you by ElkBros.com, with your host, Gilbert Ornelas, and elk hunting coach, Joe Gilly. You want to hunt elk? They live to hunt elk. Their goal is to share with you what they have learned grinding it out for over 35 seasons, doing what they love. So come on into camp and set a spell. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunters. Hello there, everyone. If it's your first time with us, glad to have you. Hope you enjoy our show. And as always, our blue collar hunters following our show out there and grinding it out with us every week. Welcome back to Elk Camp. I'm Gilbert Ornelas, the host of your show, coming to you from Spring, Texas, and from Katy, Texas, and the DFW area. That's right. We've got the Venezuelan Mafia in the house tonight, Luis Gonzalez and Manuel Guateron. And from Cimarron, New Mexico, the baddest elk hunting coaches in the country, are in the house with us, Leroy the Ninja Chavez, and that's right, your elk hunting coach Joe Gilly is in the house. What's going on, fellas? Hey. Oh, I, bet Manano, I bet Manano loved that introduction. He felt equal. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I did it just for you, just and right. Just right. That's right. You felt dude. equal for once, man. That's good of you. That's nice. I mean, I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell you what, man. I think uh, I, you guys, you listeners, you're in for a treat tonight, man, because we've been on here for about a half hour already before we even started recording, and the boys are in. We primed and ready to go, man. Ready, We're ready, to, ready to paint, that. Joe. <laughs> I'm ready to paint. I got my bucket on. My bucket of paint is right here, son. We, we got big old Unleash today. I mean, it's Unleash. Yeah, they don't want to hear about Unleash. Man. But speaking of paint, speaking of paint, check this out, boys. I, I won't be able to hear you for a second, but I want you all to see this. Got to be a silverback to wear that right there, baby. Woo-hoo. None of you skinny fellas can wear that because it'll get all crinkled up. You got to fill it out, son. It looks yes, uh, it looks cool, man. That that shirt looks cool. I just ordered one. Yeah. Hey, so, Joe, so, I, like you, I you were you, so you were first, right? Joe, he you was like no, actually, oh, yeah. he wasn't. So for people that are listening, I just showed off our 2021 New Elk Bros design T-shirt, and uh, uh, and Luis was <laughs> not first this time, man. I, I put it on Instagram, and within. Within 45 seconds, Chad Hashin had an order. Oh, Chad beat me to it. Yeah. Hey, Chad, I got news for you, bro. Sometimes being the first and ordering this stuff, it's probably best. not a good thing, man. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, just saying. Oh, it's karma. It's karma. Hey, it Joe, I, when you got up and kind of flexed your back, opened everything, and flailed that Elk Bros emblem out, you know, I said, now, look, you got to be original silverback to wear one of them shirts. You you skinny fellas can't wear it because it'll get a, all run together and you won't be able to see it be all wrinkled. When I get in that song, I'm going to Fill it out and it's gonna get elk bros. It's gonna grow big, man. <laughs> now, if you give it to Luis, you gotta give him one of them ones that's got a you know a, a big old head thing in it. Cause I'm telling you, when he puts it on, it's gonna go straight to the floor because his head's so big right now. <laughs> the leader of the Venezuela. Mafia. There you go. Now we're talking, bro. That's yeah. that's it. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. I, I it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the podcast. We ain't gonna rip a little bit here now. <laughs> and and we'll, we'll kind of just a, a little bit a hint of something that happened guys that uh every week manano complains that i always send him you know that even though i don't write these things chav does them you yeah, know he, plays he always innocent. says that i mess with them because i put the word beach in it and he has a little bit of difficulty 
with that oh, one, my just, a, just a little bit, <laughs> and, and, which so is not my fault, it's not my fault, but we're working at it. We're trying to really get him <laughs> to come along. So, yeah. so just to see if he noticed, because he's always saying that, one of our listening cities, you're going to hear which one it is when he does it, <laughs> is a winter st- type listening city. And I went and stuck in probably about five different <laughs> beaches. <laughs> uh, and we had we all, we also had to correct him on how to pronounce winter because it sounded like something else as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we'll find out how that goes when we get there, man. You know. Oh, it, but no pressure. <laughs> no, there's no pressure. People, people love my language limitation. That's why I mean they keep I, listening to our podcast hey, just to make fun of me, right? No. Oh. No, no, no. no. They're, 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 they're like, they're like, oh, he sounds so suave. For sure, mm-hmm. man. Especially our, especially our female listening audience. To <laughs> well, all, hey, how many of the, we have? Um, probably when I check Apple Podcasts, I don't know. I, it'd be interesting to find out what that number is, but it's it's a very low percentage. Right. So. It's a good thing that our ladies don't see them, though. They might like the voice, but it's a good thing that they don't, they don't see. You know? Yeah, Luis. <laughs> yeah, Luis. <laughs> if they see Luis, oh, shit. <laughs> Our audience go, it's going to go to the ground, yo. <laughs> hey, so yeah. tonight, guys, man, I, you know, I'm going to jump us off because tonight we have so much content, and I'm so excited about this uh, this series and, and what we're doing and, and the calls. The stuff that we're going to talk about tonight and the way we're going to do it is i've never heard it presented like this and and uh real anxious to see how it comes across for you guys if you if you get the picture <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's where we're going to go with it we really hope this helps you out with your calling and gets you to look at things just a little bit different so let's rock and roll guys y'all know what time it is shout it's out. time for the elk bro shout out to our show this is shout out to a few cities with the most listeners topping our charts this week and elk bro shout out to a grinder shane rasmussen of garden city utah dude man shane gave us such an incredible review on apple Podcasts. Uh, it's it just unbelievable but get this i thanked him I sent a thing to him just to thank him personally, and he texted me back a little while and goes, well, I guess I'm going to be able to catch up on all of my uh, podcasts and maybe hear some a few more times because he just uh, he just got diagnosed with COVID. So, oh, wow. Jane, man, uh, uh, get be healthy. For him. Take care of yourself, man. And uh, we're looking forward to keep working those lungs, too, whatever you do. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, those sure. lungs, okay. Yeah. All right. Remember, y'all, too, if you want to be part of our special video shout-outs, just get your cell phone, shoot 10 or 15-second video of yourself (laughs) in landscape view, tell us your name, where you're from, and include a home of whatever line or something special about your hometown. Then send the video through a message to our Elk Bros Instagram, or you can email me, joe at elkbros.com. I have one in the waiting. I'm going to wait for a couple more. And, you know, it's funny because... (laughs) The one that we got from is from Mike Bozarth, who has sent us one already. Mm-hmm. But, you know, listen, all you guys out there listening to this, unless you're just fast forwarding. And if you are, it's pretty good because we're going to go into content quick tonight, man. But Mike is like he, he struggles with the technology and this dude is making it happen, man. He sends it up to us. So uh, he sends it. We're going to show it. Looking forward to do that. Come on, y'all. Show you. you. Celebrate your place. Absolutely. So we're leading it off for us tonight, Joe. Our top listening city this week is part of the Denver Aurora Lakewood metro area. Gold was discovered in Amnair Hills in 1858 in the South Platte River Valley when it brought national attention to that area that once inhabited, but was once inhabited by the Arapaho Indians. Home to local favorite coffee hangout, Ziggs, and a historical landmark is the Big Red Castle, uh-huh. also known as the Pillar Fire. And it is an, an incredible 175-foot red sandstone building originally built in 1892 as a university. You get this, the first class of 1908 
only paid $50 per year for tuition in oh, Westminster, oh, Colorado. Oh, oh, oh. You betcha. 50 bucks for tuition? 50 bucks for tuition. I, I wonder how that compares, man, from then to today. You know, I mean, what 50 bucks represented in 1908 versus today? Okay. My daughter's college is $42,000 a year, Joe, to go to school there. A oh year. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> Next up, this city is home of the Erie Canal Museum, <clears throat> tracing the waterway's history to the 1850s. It is known for its high snowfall of 115.6 inches on average per year. That's crazy. Yeah. This area was once the stomping grounds of the historic six tribes of the Iroquois Confederacy. It is home to the Carrier Dome and the Orange of Syracuse University. Syracuse, New York. Yeah, Syracuse, shout out to my cousin. <laughs> he works for the university over there, man. Yeah. My cousin, who's a lawyer here in Houston, uh -huh. his name is Jesus Davila. He graduated from Syracuse Law School. Ah, okay. Did his first four years at the great state or the great university of the University of Texas in Austin and then went to Syracuse Law School. So did he go, was it a step up, step down? What happened? Did you know, I, I think he still hook them horns, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> up next, this city was founded in 1847 on the banks of the Willamette River known as the dogwood city of the west it is also the birthplace of the bing cherry what's a bing cherry man i don't know couldn't tell you joe yeah so uh, i'm gonna wait for somebody to either send me some bing cherries or tell me what <laughs> there he is man. so it was named after milwaukee wisconsin and is home to Dark Horse Comics, which features Sin City and Hellboy. The name is believed to have derived from the Potawatomi Indians, meaning fine land. Milwaukee, Oregon. Milwaukee, Oregon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Hellboy Milwaukee. was born. The Midwest in keeps turning out, brother. Okay. Oh, so I, I looked it up for you, Joe. I looked uh -huh. it up for you. Okay. And? I got a quick little Google finger here. Uh, the bean cherry is the maraschino cherry. Ah. So that's where I guess it got its birthplace there, huh? Ah. The maraschino. You know, you put it in a little Shirley Temple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The candy cherries, maraschino yeah, candy. candy cherry. Ice cream candy. Candy. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This top listening town is the gateway for winter sports, such as skiing and snowboarding. And it's also a summertime destination for golfing, hiking, and fly fishing, among others. It plays host for the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships and a popular yearly sunny beach film festival. It was also known as the Western White House for President Gerald Ford, Vail, Colorado, and Beto is, is laughing and I can I'm stop not. laughing. I'm not laughing. You did I was, so I good with that. What are the big Because it, it you, just you just took them out. Their yearly film festival. Oh. <laughs> I don't. You still left the sunny beach in there, I Joe. I left the sunny beach in there, man. There's no oh, sunny beach God. in Vail. Oh man. <laughs> Vail, Colorado. We just jacking with Manano, so y'all. Yeah. Keep man, it under wraps. Yeah, we we got bail right. <laughs> yeah. fix that. Well, let us in, Joe, if we go there. <laughs> yeah. Vale is, uh, I've never been to Vale, but I hear, Beautiful, you know, it's, it's been like, there. yeah, it's supposed to be in. I think we went through there. I think we went through there a couple of summers ago. Hey, did we yeah. go through there? When we yeah, went? we did, yeah. Uh, so that, that's probably about where I got the ticket then. That's when yeah, Joe the was ticket. drinking. Yeah. <laughs> when Joe was drinking. Chad was driving. Joe was drinking. It's no, no. no, I was driving, bro. And, and that police officer was not very friendly, man. <laughs> <laughs> My butt. Joe has bad luck when he drives. Oh, man. Chav, you're last up. Hey, and okay. I, I want y'all to listen close to this. This is something I never even knew, man. Uh-huh. Okay, this coastal city... 
He is southwest of Anchorage, Alaska, and sits at the mouth of the Kenai River, which is renowned for its salmon fishing. It was named after the local Dina Ina tribe's word for Kina, meaning a flat meadow or open area with few trees. Settled by the Russians, it became part of the United States after we purchased Alaska from Russia in 1869 for $7.2 million. And that's Kenai, Alaska. Kenai, Alaska. Kenai, in Alaska house. in the house. That's so awesome. Dude. That is really, really cool. I yeah. had no idea that the United States bought Alaska from Russia, man. Yes, sir. What? Yes. You didn't know that, Joe? Yeah. I knew that. $100,000. <laughs> I knew that. I mean, when everything that I ever heard about was the gold rush and everything like that, the last frontier, all of that. I believe it was $100,000 what they paid for it. 10.2 million, 1869. Million. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe I missed out a zero. It's just a zero. Just a few. I was close. Or four. <laughs> yeah, and and I think they said that would equate today and uh, to like a hundred and fifty mil, something mm. like that. But I mean, think about money. that. I think we increased uh, the our land mass incredibly, and there's a lot of there's still some ill feelings over that whole thing happening. It's real. It was a. It took a real special moment in history for that to occur. And uh, I, I'm telling you that uh, things could be different here in the United States, man. Could be way different. Yeah, no doubt. They must have had a heck of a negotiator to get that little spot for 7.2 million. I mean, yep. that's a big yep. place, man. Uh, yep. You don't really understand how big Alaska is until you do like a computer overlay and you bring Alaska into the United States. Oh, Ooh, I know. It's huge, buddy. It's a lot of territory. What? Bro. Absolutely. Uh, Some of the best yeah. hunting grounds in the world. Oh, and fish yeah. when I go there. <laughs> I want to go bad. Can so, I come as your cameraman? <laughs> yeah. So tonight's topic, let's get cranking, man. Is part seven of our Elk Bros preseason guide series, Learn to Paint with Your Elk Calling. Got this my is, brush. We're doing the second part of this. Last week, we gave our thoughts on the six main problem solution for most elk hunters that are calling elk. We talked about how we feel. Um, what is the most misunderstood and underused calling strategy, which you're going to hear more of that. And it was engaging ver or snubbing your target animal. We also talked about uh, scenario driven calling and painting a picture. We kind of set everything up for tonight. We're going to head right into that and uh, and try to get get you guys rocking with what we're talking about. But in order to get going in this, I want to start with some information points of understanding. I'm going to go through those before we really uh, get into the other stuff. Uh, so the, the first point is, y'all, the way we want you to think about this is a painting is a two-dimensional object that gives the illusion of three dimensions. It's an illusion of three dimensions. We look at a painting and, and it does not have size. It does not have dimension. It's just an illusion. Artists will blend colors of their palette to create an imaginary person, a place, or a thing the way that they want the viewer to see it as real. And the point that I'm making with this, when we're talking about painting with your elk calling, <laughs> is that you can do the exact same thing <clears throat> with different elk sounds. Creating the illusion, painting a picture as a scenario that a target bull will want to come to by their instinct by their mode or by any kind of drive that's happening in them at that time okay point two is that just about all calling just about all calling is scenario driven in some way because we use calls to paint an image to our target bull into his head to get him to come to us sounded like a cow or a group of cows as you walk, if you try to sound like an advertising bull, when you send out a location bugle, you are trying to portray an image. If we try to sound defensive or like an angry bull, or if we're challenging, that's all trying to create an illusion to make that critter come to us, right? Okay, so scenario calling is something that we do use, but 
it's a little bit different. Number three, scenarios can engage your target bull, cow calling to the bull, chuckling out or challenging, just what we were talking about, or be non-engaging. In other words, painting the illusion of your own little world that does not involve your target bull. So that's an important concept, guys, that I want people to understand, the difference yeah. between engaging and non-engaging. Uh, because, and, and here's the other thing that I want everybody to understand is that even though I start out with a non-engaging scenario, it doesn't mean it's always going to stay that way. Okay. And if, if the situation escalates to the point where, you, you know, that bull gives you the opportunity to engage at him and he's responding to it, then at that point you, you can switch that scenario, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, things can, it, elk hunting is dynamic. And that's one thing we're going to say in a second. No, point number four is most of the time, our scenarios, the elk bros, the pictures we are painting are built on our situational sketches of elk behavior and start out as being non engaging. They're not meant to engage the target animal. That is, like Luis was just saying, until he has escalated for engagement, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a point in time that the natural flow, the, the natural environment calls for us to now. I mean, he comes in and he starts uh, lip balling at, at my cows, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Now it's time for me to either me do something to show my dominance to my cows or to have a conversation with the guy that's pissing me off right yeah so that's what you got to think about so we think of this strategy y'all as the most underused and overlooked and deadly when we exclude or snub our target bull sometimes Sometimes when we do this, we don't even know that a target bull exists for sure. There's times like with Gilbert's bull, we see him, dang, a mile off, right? And we can hear bugles, so we know that there's elk. Now, I I'll tell you, if uh, I was watching a video the other day where some guys were camped on the edge of a game unit fence, and they said all the elk sounded like they were on the other side of the fence. And so they couldn't go over there to hunt them. Man, that is a perfect opportunity to use one of these strategies. Yeah, okay. sound like a party going on, Joe. Absolutely. Create our own party, right? Yeah. So we do this a lot where we move through transition areas um, or we see fresh sign or we catch a smell or we catch a low audible noise that we peg as possibly being an elk that we will actually do a scenario. We're, we're basically chumming the water to try to attract critters in the area, okay? Yep. So the, the last point is, even though we may start out our non-engaging scenario <clears throat> with a static setup, and if you've taken our base camp, you understand the difference between a static setup and a dynamic set, mm -hmm. setup, right? Mm -hmm. a, a dynamic setup being when we're calling, when we're moving, when and we get a response, Close we're in the distance. Yeah. We're going. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's like we're cutting the distance. We're dealing with how that animal comes. Mm -hmm. Everything just dynamic as we move. Just think about that, Manano, Luis, that time before Manano killed his bull, all the stuff that happened prior to that, none of it was static. We were on... We were on the bull's grounds of advantage because anytime you're moving towards an animal that's talking, he has the advantage because we're moving, he's looking. But with a scenario where you get to have start with a static setup, now we get to we get to pick the playing field. We start out that way. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to stay that way because <laughs> the situation can change on a heartbeat. Right. Yeah. But and and we know we have to change with that. Now you heard me talk about situational sketches of behavior. Let me let me explain what that is. So when we talk about our scenarios later, our scenarios are made up of these sketches of elk behavior, and these are these are behaviors 
that can be used independently, that can be combined, they can be moved to from one to another in our painting or scenarios. Some of these can stand on their own as a scenario at the time. So here's mm. here's what I, I mean by that. And you're going to hear the these come back when we get to the scenarios. So uh, we talked about them a little bit last time. An elk situational sketch could be a group of cows or bulls moving through an area. So if if we, one of the things we like to do when we're moving is how, what, how do we call when we're, when we're moving? Line V. Well, but I'm talking about when we are just trying to locate when oh, we're covering you. ground. Yeah. We're just throwing out cow call. Lo yeah. 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 Location yeah. cow call. Yep. Right. So, mm -hmm. and we're always calling near herd sounds, farms. herd sounds, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, also do to blend in some of the noise that we're making as we're approaching as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Covering our cracking limbs yes, and, sir. you know, tripping over those daggum rocks, stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But you can, you can have something where you're just sounding like a, sounding like a group of cows or a group of bulls and, and, uh, uh, or you can add some other things so that it becomes a small herd as That's well. Right. right. So That's if right. I start doing some bugles, start doing some other noises, it starts to happen like that. Okay. Uh, another situational sketch would be if I want to use a lone cow and calf, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Or a cow that has split off in search or loss. Now think about these. That, things. man, I'm telling you, I, I think that may be, and, you know, we've only been kind of, I've only been using that for the last two or three years. But I think in early season, I think there's nothing better. And that lost cow, that lost cow, and that lost calf sound, man, mm -hmm. it, it it pulls herds to you. You know, the cows are in their nature are, are mothers. You know, so when you got that lost calf sound, that pulls them in that direction. Which when it pulls the cow in that direction, it's gonna pull the bull in that direction, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And if the bull hears a lost cow, he's like, oh man, I don't. I found me one that's lost. I can carve her out from my own, you know, yes. and, and he doesn't have to be vocal to do it either. Give up his position. Uh, so he attracts more bulls. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah, especially, especially early season. Uh, and if, if, and if you're not, if you're not really um, con fixated on it having to be a big bull, yeah. um, man, it's, you know, for them satellite bulls, it's just a slam dunk. <laughs> Agree. The the way I want everybody to understand this is with these situational sketches. I want you to think of them as sound clips, each mm -hmm. independent sound clips. That if I had a place that I could take each clip and just put them side by side, I could create a scenario. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I started out with cows moving through an area, right? Mm -hmm. And I get a response from a bull, but he's not doing too much with it. Now, what if I added a sound clip of uh, a cow that is lost in there? Mm -hmm. It's coming mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. So I've actually now taken two different modules and put them together to create a mini scenario. Do you follow me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. sure. Well, Joe, that's, that's what I tried doing. When after Manano killed his bull that you came in and there was another bull coming and, and, you know, I was back, you know, in the back trying to call in, mm -hmm. that was by all means, my intent, whether the execution well, was not effective, it's, it's very different. Uh -huh. Well, but, the, the outcome was the, the bull in a, in, in it, this is, I, I saw it, the, the bull, they thought that they were a hot cow. You, they were a hot cow there. You looked a lot like like a hot cow. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to paint a scenario where He's there mad. were He's actually mad. cows, a couple of cows, and then the bull was actually to try to move the cows away. And so I kept trying to walk away and, and with the bull sound, kind of like the bull was actually pushing the cows away as this bull was coming. Mm -hmm. So, but then obviously when you started to cow call, then at that point, I'm like, hmm, that's weird. That's probably because the bull is going away. So I need to kind of change strategies and see if I can get his attention. But yeah, you, you were, were on the other hand, seeing a completely different picture. You were well, like, 
<laughs> so so yeah. everybody knows what's going on here. If you haven't watched our uh, Blue Collar Strong, we, we actually have a conversation about this that happened on our last hunt. And and I am actually in shooting position. Luis is back as caller. And there we have rules. And the rules are when you're the shooter, you're the shooter. The only time that mm -hmm. you should actually be calling is you if you need to stop an animal for a shot. Um, or to scream after you've shot an animal, the job of the caller is to call. And so mm -hmm. Luis is back behind me, but he's actually back and off towards my right on the downside of a ridge with a bull coming across from my left to my right. Well, Luis did such a good job of calling that, that bull that the bull was walking <clears throat> away from me out of yeah. shooting position to go down on the other side of the ridge where Luis was at. So at that point, something has to happen. And so mm -hmm. I had to call just to stop him. And even though I'm now becoming the solo hunter because mm -hmm. my partner ship is shot basically <laughs> uh you know that i'm doing that i had to do it or there was nothing going to happen for me right. right so the point that i was making to luis at the time is when you hear your caller start calling something wrong thumbs up yeah yeah so that yeah and that was a lesson hard learned but definitely a good one yeah absolutely so uh in in these little modules, in these situational sketches, each one of these can be put together and they're going to be put together in our scenarios. I want you to just think about, so we talked about the lone calf and, and, and uh, cow and calf. We talk about the lost cow or calf. Um, there's two bulls responding to each other that we use sometimes with a double bugle or escalating bulls, two escalating bulls that are, this is, Man, because anytime you start, and we always start with cow calls, y'all. Listen yeah. to what I'm saying. We always start with cow calls. Um, you can even start with calf calls if you want because they're even mm -hmm. less intimidating. And they generally mean that there's a calf looking for a herd, so there's somebody, there's a mama around. There's somebody help. needs help. Yeah. Somebody you always help. respond to help. Well, yeah. Most people do. <laughs> the, the, the cool thing is if you introduce a cow, you can always introduce a bull, and now it's starting to paint the picture as to why. It, so imagine this. I've given a cow call, and we have a bull that's sounded off. He's chuckling, just like yours, just like Manano's bull did. He's over there chuckling. He's over there calling, right? Okay. Well, if I'm not going to him, if you're not going to him, Luis... And that bull is, he's bark chuckling at you to like, come over here. Show yourself. Yeah, yeah, show yourself. Then he needs to know why you're not coming to him. So that's why I would introduce a bull cow. and start, I'm sorry, a cow. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Introduce a cow and start taking her away right. so that it makes sense to him that, oh man, there's another bull in the area that's got that cow, right? Yeah. And then he will either want to go follow up on that or try to scent check it, right? So yeah. uh, that's something that happens. So you, you kind of think about how all these can escalate and get put together. Uh, attending bull with cows, you know, a bull demonstrating or showing dominance for cows. Now, if, if we talk about the calls that go with this, like, for example, two mm -hmm. escalating bulls, there's we've done this, you, uh, Gilbert, you and I have done this for chat. We did yeah. escalating bolts, right? You and we actually did it with some herd talk. So if we did it with herd talk, it's not just two escalating bulls. It's probably most likely a bull with cows and a satellite aggravating the crap out of each other, which mm -hmm. is even more attractive to any other bulls in the area because now mm -hmm. they know that it's there's a, a possible herd bull, there's some cows, yeah. right? Right? Yeah, yeah so, I mean, yeah. just think about it, you know, if you're out on the street and the fire starts to break out and what's the yeah. first thing you're going to do, you're going to come Crowd close around. to see what's up. Exactly, man. And why do you think they, yeah. it is that they do that? What? Cause they, they're social animals, yeah. <laughs> super well, social animals. Serious so, too. So yeah. well, and then, and then it's also an opportunity for, you know, you guys out. are distracted fighting yeah. and there might be yeah. cows around too. Yeah. They know there's cows <laughs> around. They hear them. Why do you, why do you think, um, in 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 high school when we were there and there was a fight everybody wanted to why do you think we'll see who wins. To, huh we'll see who wins 
And, and why is that? So who's the dominant one? There you go. <laughs> the strong will survive, man. Yeah, because you learn real quick who not to mess with. To mess with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and, and you can figure on which one. You straight so up don't want to mess like, around with Jim. Yeah, That's because it. these bulls want to know who's in line with each exactly. other. It's kind of how Manano accepts that he's not the leader. <laughs> now a, a bull demonstrating or showing dominance for cows this is critical because i want you to think about this too if it, break this down a bull demonstrating or showing dominance for cows so if if i'm trying to go in and i'm trying to get a bull to get pissed with me and it's not happening when i am engaging him directly again not engagingly I try to engage his cows. Yeah, exactly. Call his cows to him. Yep. And yeah. by me talking to his cows, I've thrown out insults. Right. Okay. So, so point, you know, your, your number eight scenario is actually a bull demonstrating dominance over another bull's cows. Yeah. So it could be that, or it could be his, his own, own as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if I had a bull that's, uh, that I'm ignoring, that's coming in to me and he throws up a roundup bugle, and you guys have heard this, man. You've heard, uh, you've heard that uh, lip ball. Those bulls start getting that mm -hmm. lip ball call, you know, when they start doing that. So they're going to. Uh, everybody knows what a lip ball sounds like. Do you, yeah. do you want me to demonstrate it? Yeah, demonstrate it, Joe. You hear the lip ball like that, mm -hmm. right? When you hear that lip ball, that is a demonstration, a dominant type bugle. When you hear multiple bulls doing that, when it's done short, it's more of a call to say, hey, girls, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm the man, right? I'm coming. When you, do, when you hear those Getting longer ready. ones, it, it's telling those, that other bull, like, I'm the man. You're talking to exactly. a bull and not talking to the cows, right? Watch the bass in your voice, boy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, when they, yeah, I could, I wasn't sure how that came across with these mics. Did y'all hear that? Okay. No, it was good. Yeah, yeah, it sounded perfect. All right. Um, so that bull that sounded almost as good as my bugle, Joe. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, you <laughs> right, Luis. You have your calls with you, man. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Well, I, I do just in case somebody wants to I'm just doing, the, I'm just doing this for Manano. You know, Manano would feel bad if I would really start displaying my my I calling Manano, skills. Bro. Right, right. Uh, now. Wait, he can't I ain't scared, bro. You right now, Manano. He can't pick on you, bro. He did not bring his. Uh, he did not want to step I'm doing it for him. I just don't you want know. him to feel all left out and just. You know, no, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I told you. Say whatever. He, he can say whatever he wants, but the, the, the reality is, uh, uh, I mean, he wanted to call to make sounds like a like a bull, and then he he was doing sounds like a like a hot cow. He doesn't know how. Hey, how at least I'm making properly. sounds. What are you making, bro? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> stop painting with paint, baby. The, yeah, yeah. the next module, the next module, that next sketch, another one there is a bull with a hot cow. And so, you know, a lot of people are like, well, is, is that a scream? Is that a, well, what, how do you demonstrate a bull with a hot cow, man? No, they, they usually glunk a bunch, man. Oh, when they're say, isn't more girl toll yeah. type sounds. It's, it's all like glunking, <laughs> more <Back> panting, <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, and that glunk. <laughs> Frustrated, man. I love it. it is, yeah. If you I think love. of, and look, y'all, it's just sexual frustration, man. It just I was going to say, it's man, like, is, the, I, <sighs> is it allowed to say horny in the podcast? Is that allowed? Hey man, we can say whatever we want, brother. It might it might hit the room the room floor when it's over with. But, you know, Joe likes the woo button and everything. You know? But it, it it's frustration, man. It's sexual. Yeah. Yeah. When when you start. <laughs> when you start like, hearing what that. What's going on? Yeah. Why ain't we ready? I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and you start hearing the oh, glove. You start hearing. Yeah, you start hearing that stuff. Um, you hear the little whines that starts happening. Getting like already. They're going. <laughs> so, so it, what's so great about that is there's so many guys that worry about calling other people in, and 
Really, man, when you start working those low audible noises like that, nobody's yeah. going to hear those. But no, no. It's close range, man. Yeah. And now let me tell you what. People wonder, like, how far off? In fact, uh, we're going to have this question a little later, but they're wondering, how far off can a bull hear you, man? Let me long tell you way. what. They can hear a long ways. And you you start dealing in the morning when you have that crisp, cool air and you're bouncing it inside a bowl or something like that, you can call into a long way. Yeah, they topography hear... topography has a lot to do with it, though, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And wind. And wind. Mm -hmm. Sure. But they're going to hear you... <clears throat> way easier than you're going to hear them oh yeah okay and when you make those kinds of noises they are picking up on those man they hear that and they know well, they got that. a couple huge satellites man that they just point in any direction you know yeah. it's just so easy <laughs> i mean Big they're hearing is so much better than ours their ears. Yeah. so an, another another one of our uh sketches our modules is uh a destination bull that's traveling <clears throat> cows. Guys, whenever, whenever you hear a bull uh, and you think that that bull is talking back to you but running away from you, that's this. He ain't is talking back happens. to you. No, he yeah. ain't talking. He's back talking to them cows. Yeah, he's just like, yeah. here I am. We're going. Here mm -hmm. I am. He's following, man. Here I am. Do you think here there is a? Here I am. There the could be cows now. going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how about, do you think there could be a chance that that bull, like, is interpreting your calls as it, as somebody behind feeling like he's being left behind and he's just simply saying, hey, here we are, catch up, no, you know, he, get no, with no, us, no, or, no, but you see, know what I mean? Understand, when he's out in the park and all mm -hmm. his cows are around him and they're visual, Mm -hmm. They don't bugle the same amount of times as when they hit the trees because right. now his cows aren't visual. And so he is just announcing I'm here. I'm his here. position where it's at. Mm. And the other good thing about it is another bull back there is trying to get him to announce his position. Sure. That bull starts getting up. Remember, that bull is bringing up the rear, right? So if he's uh -huh. bringing up the rear, he can start poking some of these gals on the rear end if he feels like we need to move just a little bit quicker mm. if somebody's coming in on us here so uh that destination bull with cows that's an important module and and we'll talk about that here in a little bit you can have multiple escalating bulls and that's a lot of fun to do oh man, man and, absolutely and, and, and just think about that and and you got to be patient with it because it has to escalate you know when when you're doing that it has to go from you know where they're talking to each other where they're getting a little aggravated with each other where they raise the intensity a little bit mm -hmm. when they're starting to get closer where they start to now scream or or show dominance to each other to where well man i'm going to cut you off and scream at you it just escalates each time when you do do that and don't worry about it taking a long time to escalate because elk move in elk's time, they don't move in people time. So yeah. when you're putting on a show like this, as long as you're looking around and checking, you can catch those bulls that are coming in to size up those three bulls that are coming in together. Yeah, you know, Chav and I, I think Chav mentioned this on the last podcast. He and I were up on top of a really big ass mountain that we climbed up on because we heard a bull up there early in the morning and we actually got up there and man, we were just wore out from getting up there. And he said, well, you know, cow call one more time. And I cow called one more time and man, this bull blows up and he's pretty good ways from us. So he said, all right, go ahead and bugle once. And I bugle and that bull fired up. And then a bull way down below us fired up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh Oh, and then I just started cow calling. Yeah. And man, that bull that was further away got closer. Yep. The one that was up the mountain from it got closer. Yep. And I rained another bugle back and everything, man. He just like stepped on me and I stepped on him and then the bull down below blows up and I blow him up. Right. And it is like, here come the cavalry son, the whole, that bull had a herd of cows <laughs> with him. This satellite bull was coming to us the whole time, but he didn't know it. And then he hears all the cow talking below down there. And it's just, it is literally the perfect storm of two bulls coming to really just 
and we pulled those bulls to us. We didn't necessarily cut the distance on them. They cut the distance on us. Yeah. We just kind of stayed put and mm-hmm. didn't need to keep rolling because before we knew it, he was in our hip pocket, you know. Mm-hmm. And then right after he made the shot, the other bull comes up with, I don't know, what do you have, 15, 20 cows, Chev? Yeah, he did. I mean, he had 15 or 20 cows with him. It's a herd bull. I mean, a big one. Now, look, the bull that Chav shot was a giant bull, too. So, so Chav, I mean, did, did any of those other bulls that were converging that he's talking about, did they have cows with them, too? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, wow. the, that satellite bull, you know, that Gilbert was talking about had, had some cows with him. And, uh, of course, the herd bull that came in had cows. So, but, uh, so you had a convergence. Yeah, it was a convergence. It was, yeah. it was pretty cool, huh, Gilbert? Oh, my gosh. It, it's the first bull I've ever called in in my life. And I actually yeah. called in three, you know, because the way the herds could – there was a whole bunch of bulls in that group. But the two biggest ones, I mean, they dang near uh, – the, the, the satellite bull almost stepped on Chad. That's how – he almost – if he would have took a left instead of a right, he would have walked over the top of Chad. And when he turned to the right, he was at about 12 feet. He turned and walked down a little hill and turned left, you know, and I mean, that's the whole, the gainer syndrome, which pen, all of them. <laughs> you know? I mean, dude, it was unbelievable. And then the other boy, after he shot that gainer the bull, syndrome, the, the other bull walks up, Bruce going to give me a heck of <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, the other bull walks up from the bottom and he's got, 20 cows with him and probably six or seven satellites off the side of him. And they're all coming up in there, you know, doing their mewing and uh, bull mewing and everything. And uh, I, he could have shot that one stone dead at 12 yards. He's standing broadside. I mean, stone and had no clue. We were there had not a clue in the world. Was that but, shot a shot? Yeah. But it, yeah. we was wondering where the other bull was, yeah. you know, because we shut up. I mean, we didn't say another word there in our kitchen, you know. Yeah. So, I, actually, I was scared to death. We got a whole herd of elk in the middle of us, and they got some giant antlers, right? I mean, it's <laughs> aggravated. Bokey antlers. Yeah, they are <laughs> aggravated at me, you know. So, it was uh, it was one of the most – it was special for me because, number one, I got to call a Chav in uh, – I got to call a bull in from my dear friend Chav, and um, – it was, and we worked tremendously hard on getting to where we got. Oh yeah. Uh, and then it seemed like we was never going to get off that mountain, Joe. That's the most, that's the 1.8 miles of mountain. <laughs> that forever I mountain. Walk 10 miles yeah. on a 1.8 mile mountain. I am, I, and that's what I named it, the 1.8 mile mountain. Cause I mean, yeah. I'm looking at GPS, another like 1.8 miles. It was like a treadmill, just, you know, the more we walked, the longer it got. Yeah, like Joe Gillia was leading me in circles the whole time because the daggum, <laughs> the daggum uh, uh, GPS said one point. I said, oh, man, Chav, how far are we now? Oh, it just says 1.8 miles. I said, listen, geographical oddity. We're 1.8 miles from everywhere. You know? <laughs> but the, the, whole thing, the whole thing with that day, too, was – you know, we hadn't heard a whole lot that morning. Oh, no, and yeah. We were we were just about ready to turn around and head back, and we heard a, you know, I told Gilbert, was that a bugle? And he goes, yeah, over there. Oh. I said, well, let's check it out. And that was the only thing we heard all morning long. And before we know it, we're in the middle of two herds. So. Yeah, it blew up. Wow. And it- well, in, in that morning, we had busted, you know, we, we got in on them real early, and we busted two herds of elk walking in there and then we had a little unfortunate event we had a bull talking back to us it was yeah you know, he was really talking back to us and then pa, 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 you hear some boys pulling up yeah. on you in the, in the putt putt you know and <laughs> poof, they vanish like fairy dust in the wind i mean gonzi you know so we're looking at each other like i can't believe this dude you know it's same the same scenario joe old boy gets off with his bugle you know uh-huh. ain't seen me or chav at all we've been pulling on that bull for the last 10 minutes and he gets off Brrr, and takes off and goes another half uh-huh. mile or whatever and blows his bugle thank you buddy appreciate it uh, <laughs> you were a lot nice to me i might have listen an answer that uh that might have <laughs> yeah. convinced you to go for a walk man <laughs> anyway i mean it, it pushed chav and i on up the mountain so we'd have never had that encounter if it wasn't for them old well, boys you made the... an important point though before i because i'm getting ready to jump into this but you yeah. made an important point that's a learning moment and what you said 
where you said you shut up. There are times when that's all you need to do is shut up. Yeah, when yeah. Some of the things have developed themselves. Mm -hmm. If you're in between two bulls that are going off that are converging and they're coming, mm -hmm. man, there is no, let the, let the other critter do the work for you. Let them be your call. Yeah. There's, yeah. Yeah. but also There's nothing like live decoys, nothing like live decoys, so something, um, something on that as well. It also depends if, especially if you're solo hunting, mm -hmm. there comes a time where when they're super close that, you, you yeah. just need to shut up. Yeah. You can't. Absolutely. Otherwise, they'll spot you, especially if you're solo hunting, right? Yeah. So. Look, I'm, I'm telling you, Chad and I have been in some <laughs> really cool scenario scenarios because, you know, I wasn't starting out. I wasn't the best caller. But I'm going to tell you right now, son, if I can see you and you don't see me or smell me, I'm getting in your kitchen. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, they in trouble. I'm getting in your kitchen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my woodsmanship. Get in there, and we're gonna we're gonna sneak up on you. We're gonna put the Mohican sneaking on you. You hear me? And I mean, we are gonna get on you. So, we... all right, right y'all, let's you, learn to paint. Let's teach be... these boys how to paint. Now, all right. Okay. I told you. I told you we were pumped, man. I yeah, told you we were pumped. I know, pumped. man. I do. I told everybody it was coming tonight, man. It was rolling, man. <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Look, I, I had to shut up, but I also then bulls were leaving. Asked, I had to get them softly called back. I'm telling you, man, I, I, that was the Sistine's Chapel. That was the Michelangelo that time that I painted that deal. Brother. That, <laughs> the gold, son. Hear me? Uh, yeah. uh, so let's teach people to paint. Let's tell what everybody can, what you need in order to paint, man. First, you need to know your palette. You got to know the colors, which are your elk sounds and your calls that you will be using to layer together to create your illusion, to create your uh, sketch, your module that we had just talked about Portrait. before. Okay. So your palette is going to consist of cow sounds. They're going to be chirps, mews, whines, insistent buzz, pleading mews. And, you know, uh, if, if you guys are like any of you guys say that, oh, what the heck is a pleading mew or SOS or a lost cow muse? Um, oh, and we stay away from barks. There's no reason for as for your cow sounds to do a bark because I have no. found that generally when you bark, when you're introducing cow sounds, that you pretty much get everything out of Dodge. Now, when you bark chuckle with the bull and you demand for them to show themselves, it's a little bit mm -hmm. different deal. I do yeah. that all the time, man. But yeah, well, especially responding to their bark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joe? Yeah. Uh, could you, uh, you know, for our listeners, demonstrate the different cow calls? Because most people just think cow call bugle. All right. Like, what's, so what's a chirp is chirp is real short. <laughs> They're real short. When you start getting the muse, they're going to go just a little bit longer. So you're hearing chirps and muse there. You hear the difference? Now when you start whining, That's it's just like count. just like your kids whine. Oh, mom. 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 Now, when you start getting that insistent buzz, that's when you start hearing that that uh, that voice added to it at the end. So, <laughs> that's your insistent buzz when you start getting that sound. It becomes a bit more urgent. Oh yeah, it's like you know, it's just a little bit more, you know. Uh, demanding a little more urgent, a bit more emotion to it. Yeah. When you start hearing pleading news, it's just and and you'll hear this a lot with her. And I'll throw it. I gotta kind of do regular cow calls when I do it. So you'll hear mews, and then you'll hear you'll tell when I'm pleading. That's just uh, that's just trying to get attention. It's like, hey, yeah. hey, over here. Right. You know, yeah. it's like 
You hear that? You know, where it's, eh, 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 eh. Yeah. 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 You know, and I just think, I, I just look at it as, as a wave, like water coming mm -hmm. at you, just going up, down, up, you know, oh. up, mm -hmm. down, up. Okay. Just like that. And that's that, that pleading you in there. And uh, you can even, when you start getting that, uh, those lost cow, You start getting yeah. that real there's, high there's more of an alarm. You start really high pitched and then just like it's going just to keep it high a little bit and then just drop it at the end, right? Yeah. And it's a and, constant. And you can yeah. even go along with it. I mean, they change up. Yeah. I'm trying to stand in a pattern, but you can get it so it just stays out and you can even drag it a little bit longer out there. Mm -hmm. It's just really sending out. It's like, hey, you know, it's mm -hmm. like just like you guys, man, when Where'd you're go? And you're and you're lost, man, and you need somebody and you're like You know, you start asking, you start. Yeah, Manano calls me like that in the woods all the time. <laughs> yeah, why don't, you, why don't you throw a bark just to show people? Because they may, they may never seen an elk, and that's the reason why. Go, go. No, yeah, that would be a bark. You hear, you hear that? They're gone. <laughs> this is a, like like Joe said. This is a bull when he's chuckling and he'll do it. I, I, look, if you ever hear that, as soon as you. <laughs> You get that. The first thing you do is you just go right back at it, man. Bark, chuckle, bark at it. Yeah. You you change try to turn the tables and, and you go on to the offense with that. You know last year, Joe, you called that seven by seven in and he was a bark chuckler. Mm -hmm. And every time he would decide he want to go away, he'd bark chuckle. And as soon as Joe would answer back and step on him, he'd turn I mean, he would actually turn his body around to come back to find out where it was. He just could not find that other bull. And when he couldn't find the other bull, he man, he just stopped in the wrong place, man. I mean, he's <laughs> 38 yards through the thickest stuff like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, I did everything I could to find. And, and, you know, like Joe said, you don't want to become the caller when you're the shooter. So, you know, one time he made a, a move like he was going way off, and I actually did call to him so we could turn him around. And when he barked, chuckled again, Joe got him to turn around and come back again. You know, I mean, um, it's really about, like Joe said, painting a picture, you know, and get in speaking their language. They're curious animals, but they want, they're they not stupid at all. When they ain't seeing an elk and they're hearing an elk, they ain't yeah. sitting right with them. That, that was one of the biggest lessons for me, uh, Joe. I did not know what to do with the bark. And that bull that I was trying to call in for you mm -hmm. barked at me and... Um, you know, I learned that day that I needed to, I need to bark back. And, so but he didn't just you ever... bark. It just wasn't a bark. It was a bark chuckle. Chuckle, so, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that bark chuckle is a little bit more just show yourself. It's not yeah. It's not the thing yeah. like there's something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, distinguish between a bark and a bark chuckle. <laughs> you get that kind of sound going mm -hmm. from it, okay? Mm -hmm. So then it's like, I'm like, Barking that bark out and then and then adding that chuckle to it when we do that. So because yeah, basically that bull is 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 saying I don't see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they'll just go. And he's warning everybody. But then, it, but then uh, when you return that bark, he's you know you're doing the same thing. So he's kind of absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, hey, no, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like somebody when they uh they say they'll bet you a dollar and they're like, well, let me see the dollar. No, you ain't saying my dog. It's your yeah. dog first, man. Mm. You know? And you know that bull that we had doing that with us, Joe, he actually sounded like a monkey, dude. Oh, yeah. He did not do regular <laughs> chuckles. It was like... <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You know, it starts getting that kind of... Yeah. It was crazy. I'd never heard anything before in it. But, you know, when they... Typically, when you hear a cow and she goes... <laughs> like that, it's done. Over. <laughs> everybody's clearing the drawers everybody's rolling up man you hear that it's king's x right it's now everybody's out 
but, you know. But don't give up on it, man. Don't. No, no doubt. But a bull that does that to you, he's just wanting you to move. He's just wanting you to show yourself. And if you got one of those predator decoys, man, and you walk around that rascal, you I'm telling you, elk don't know how many feet you are, to quote Jerry Maya Johnson. He don't know how many <laughs> feet you got. So at the end of the day, y'all move with that decoy. Joe and I did it. We walked right into a herd of bulls with it. You know, uh, they, like I said, you paint the scenario that you're there, use the tools that you got, and you guys are going to be successful. You can do it. The cow sounds, I think I think the cow sounds are what really give the authenticity to what's going on because when I am portraying one of these and we're going and we need to get down to it so we can talk about it, those cow sounds and what I do with those are really gonna kind of sell what's going on. Now the usual bull sounds, the usual bull sounds that everybody knows, and understand that bulls do mew. So when I start when I start mewing through my tube and, and with my mouth outside, it sounds a little different. <coughs> hear that difference? <coughs> you hear the difference? Yeah. Okay. So, especially early season, you can give those mews through your tube and it sounds more like a bull mew through there. Location bugle. Everybody knows the typical location bugle. And a lot of times when I do a location bugle, I don't even worry about the bottom. It's just. I'm yeah, just going just with that. Because that high pitch is really yeah. what's traveling, right? Yeah. So no point in wasting your breath and the, and the yeah. buildup. Yeah, no, man. Broadcast it out, yeah. man. Just get that high pitch out there. Uh, the challenge bugle or scream is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> you get that scream just uh, real quick, hard, with the raspy voice on that. At the at the front and at the end, that yeah. raspy. Yeah, sound. and it's it, it, more aggressive. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just adding that voice inflection when you do that. Okay, now if if I'm worried about sounded bigger than another bull, yeah. So that sounds a little different. Listen to the difference. <laughs> Hear the difference in that scream there. Mm -hmm. You can even just keep going. <laughs> You can just keep adding that voice to it the whole time there, yeah. all right, when you do that. Uh, I did the lip ball just a little while ago, um, chuckles we did. Grunts and chuckles to me are pretty much the same thing, man. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just a little bit longer. Most people say chuckles shorter, where it's... <coughs> where that's to be a chuckle like that, where... <coughs> Okay, where that would be more, they would say, I call it a chuckle. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't worry about it. I right. combine those all in together. And then um, growls. Growls, man, there's a lot of time when a bull's coming, you want to make it really authentic. You don't even bugle them, just... <laughs> just what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's just that, you better back off, man. I'm telling you, back off. And then we have, so those are the cow sounds, the bull sounds. We have what we call our tending or breeding bull sounds. That's the glunks. You got the pants. The moans and groans. The frustrated whines are going to kind of sound like they're kind of... You know, where you're starting to get that inside of it. Um, the roundup bugle, the roundup bugle is just a, it's just a shortened kind of location. It's just, that's a roundup bugle, man. It's just like, let's go, man. Let's just let's get <laughs> yeah. out of here. Where you have the location being, And then you have the roundup, just real quick and hard, fast like that. 
um, the short lip ball bugles, what I talked about before. Then you have, guys, this is the thing that I think people miss out on is the environmental sounds, mm -hmm. stomps. When you're raking, stomp on the ground, roll some rocks. Uh, when you rake that tree, don't just like hit at a tree. Think about a bull when a bull's working their horns on a tree with those yeah. long strokes. Grab a big branch and rake yeah. it against that tree, man. Well, your your Instagram post there, Joe, just oh, shows you doing that yeah. so good, man. I love that sound because the sound mimics it yeah. so good. tree in his hand I'm, I'm telling you man i'm thinking here is like okay what am i going to be using this year to practice all these different sounds and you've just summarized in i don't know less than 10 minutes so many different sounds yeah i mean if you're not recording this podcast or recording this youtube in this 10 minutes that joe just went through all the different sounds i mean yeah you're doing yourself a disfavor i, I i'm gonna do it because it just I, I just love the fact that you just done that. I mean, it's just such a short time. And if all these if, sounds, if you watch our, uh, if you watch our Academy and blue collar strong too, oh, yeah. I watch that uh, my whole hunt that I'm doing is I'm using different calls for the bull. A lot of times I'm actually trying to use a, a dominant, more lip ball type call to try to, and I'm not doing this for the bull. I'm trying to slow yeah. down the cows, yeah. man. Yeah. Just trying to slow them because they're going to a destination and I'm trying to keep up with where they're going so we have a shot, right? So you got to think about those types of things. If I'm just screaming at the bull and he's still going, 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 he's going, going, going because the cows are going, man. So mm -hmm. I tried to slow the cows down and we managed to slow them yeah. down enough to stick with them. Yeah, you were going to kill a cow. Oh, you I didn't kill we we did. Kill I thought them. we just sped up, man, and we're faster than them. <laughs> That's how it felt anyway. What happens when you when you hunt with the man, dude? You either going in circles or you speeding up. <laughs> true. True statement there. Might not be ever something true never said. So we just talked about the palette, man. We just gave you your paints. That's These right. are the things that you're going to dab in and you're going to apply. And you're going to paint them in an order. You're going to take a little bit of this mew. You're going to add a little bit of a frustrated wine from a bull. You, you know, you're just painting that picture. These are your palette, okay? So next, though, before you can paint, you got to pick your canvas. And that's basically basically the setup and so what are you what kind of canvas are you looking for and y'all that is the beauty of scenario calling grinders tuning in thank you for listening to the blue collar elk hunting podcast our goal is to share our knowledge and help you flatten that learning curve so that you too can have some of the very same incredible experiences that have given all of us here at Elk Bros a lifetime of memories. If you like what you hear or see, you can get all of this information plus so much more from our Base Camp Elk Hunting Training Camp, the first in a series of online courses from our Blue Collar Elk Academy. Our Base Camp Training Camp allows me to use my coaching style and share almost 40 years of elk hunting experiences successfully hunting elk on public lands as well as over 20 years guiding hunters of all ages and experience levels. This course will be like nothing you have ever experienced in concept and structure using success-based coaching techniques that will elevate your confidence and skill sets. Our camp will prepare you specifically from that final moment most in your control, those final minutes or seconds the elk is in front of you, backwards through each step and level, allowing you to see, visualize, understand, and relate every coaching point to what lies ahead. 
the next step, the next thought process, the next success. Because y'all, you've already been there. You know what it looks like. By tapping my 30 years of teaching and coaching experience, our camps are developed considering multiple learning modes with text, visuals, audio, as well as video. And Basecamp will benefit those new to elk hunting all the way to the 10 to 15 year vet. So if you are looking for that one thing to help you fill that tag this year, invest in the most important piece of equipment there is, you and your elk hunting knowledge. You can find the Blue Collar Elk Hunting Academy and the Base Camp Training Camp at elkbros.com. That's E-L-K-B-R-O-S dot com. Keep dreaming of the screaming, believing and achieving, and most of all, keep grinding. When you are scenario calling, you get to pick the playing field to start off. That gives you the advantage. Okay, again, it could change. Uh, and it just kind of depends on you. How quick are you to give in? You got to be careful. Just because you have a bull, like if I'm over here and I'm putting in my pants and I start sounding like a, uh, I start throwing some buzz calls or some long pleads or mews, right? And I'm doing that and the bull bugles off over here, even if he just does a lip ball over there. I can just still ignore him and do him my thing, and that's really going to tick him off. And he's mm -hmm. still coming, man, because he's like, well, no, he's not paying attention to me, man. I might even be able to get in tighter to see his cows or to do some scent checking. So you got to think like that. You are putting yeah. on a play, man, when you paint that picture. And you're so, so, Joe, th this to me, this step right here alludes huh? to the comment I made on our last podcast. Mm -hmm. This is your the moment in which you gather as much information as possible around you in order to make that decision as to what picture you're going to paint. So you have the toolbox of the different paints that you're going to be using. Now your canvas is, okay, what do I have to work with? And then so, at that point, just make a decision of what to, that's, what to paint, right? Yeah. That's assuming that you got all those tools in the toolbox or yeah, all those yeah. paints. Yeah, I mean, right. we're just talking step two, yeah, right? For sure. With your canvas. Yeah. But, but really, guys, what and that's what I try to tell people is this is not as complicated because no. remember, when when I do a, a mew and and when I do a chirp, <coughs> all I'm doing is changing my air volume and just extending one, one real short. And then if I want to change that to uh, what, to a, a, a demanding, uh, to a selfish mew, I just add voice inflection. It's not rocket science with that. It just takes some practice with it. That would be part of your palette. Uh, palette, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> That's part palette. of your palette, man. All of so, those part of the palette. So I'm talking about the canvas now, right? Yes. Which is, which is. But you can so have a say, say you have a good palette mm -hmm. to work with, and you right. feel confident about that. But then this next step, when you got your canvas, is like, okay, in order to really understand your canvas, this is your information gathering point and your decision making as well. It's like, right. okay, what do I have to work with? So, and then okay. this is where you gather information, such as, you know, wind, your terrain, uh, what you're hearing from different stuff, right, Joe? Right, right. Wind has got to be the number one thing. Because if yeah, you don't yeah. have to cut distance and stuff, you got to know the wind. It ain't going to make a damn bit of difference how good an elk color you Absolutely, are. Absolutely, man. <laughs> and you don't uh, play that wind. And Luis is exactly on, man. You've got to have those considerations of wind, terrain, yeah. vegetation, and you got to consider other things. Are you archery or are you rifle? Are you solo or are you with a partner? Sure. Because if you're archery and you're rifle, you got two different goals, right? Right. Because yes. if I'm an like archery hunter, I want I want a situation that is as tight as possible. In other words, I want to use terrain and vegetation so that critter has to be on in my confident shooting range before it stops to try to find me. Okay. Yeah, and preferably tight cover too, because yeah. he's going to be in tight when he that, comes in. If you got to get him to park, it's going to be tough. Cover or terrain, bro, because here, here's the thing that I, that and I tell people. Let's say you have a bull that is coming uphill, and it does happen. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing a scenario, you can absolutely get it. Let's mm -hmm. say he's coming uphill. Do you want to be 60 yards from that rise 
or would you rather be 30 yards from that rise? Because what's going to happen is as soon as that bull comes up Skyline. over that level and he stops, he's going to come where he can see, and that's where he's going to stop and look. If, if you have thick vegetation in, in an area that's kind of covering 30 yards out, that bull is going to come through, and the first place that he can stop and look, he's going to. I have a video of that nasty-sounding bull, that one bull that sounds horrible that I have, that I call into like eight yards. Mm -hmm. And you can see his horns going through the pine through trees, the all thick. Yep. And what <laughs> happens as soon as he hits the opening where he can see? He stops, man, and he yeah. looks just like that dead so, bull. yeah so he was dead when he walked out if if you have a bull that's coming you know uh in, in any change of direction where they're starting to come up you want to make sure that you are close enough to where they're going to be looking from okay yep. um yes, sir. whereas with the rifle hunter rifle hunter they don't want it tight. They want to be able to see. Yeah, you want yeah, it yeah. Visual, yeah. Right? visibility. You, you dist distance is your friend when you got a rifle. Yeah, man, because you can you can see undetected. Them. Yep, absolutely, man. You can catch them relaxed, right? Yeah, In a relaxed state. Um, or solo with a partner, because if you're solo, you have to you have to think about that terrain or vegetation and you really have to be careful about your setup when you're solo if you have a partner you just got to make sure that you're broke up and let the partner do the work because yeah. when i'm solo i got to know that that bull is going to come in to a certain distance and that's why i'm throwing my calls behind me Back. but he's going yeah. to come someplace and he's going to stop to look because i am the source of the calling yeah but when I'm partnered and the source of the calling is back behind me, I don't have to worry as much about that. I yeah. can pull that bull by me. Okay. Um, so that, that's as far as picking your canvas. And, and that's the great thing. Like, for example, uh, Gilbert, when you and I, when you killed that big bull, that we had so picked our canvas that we had a ground blind and oh, yeah. we had a decoy on the other side of the park. That's how much of an advantage we had that I was going to put on a scenario, pull that bull in. He's hearing elk. He comes into now where he can see an elk, and now that bull's coming, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah bugling his head off the whole time, looking at that cow up on the side of that hill. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nuts. He has no clue. He didn't even say another word. We sat there and just waited, and all Joe said was, I hope you're ready. He said, Are you ready? I said, dang right, I'm ready, man. Absolutely. He goes, when I when you decide to draw, I'm gonna tell you to draw. He said, when you decide to draw, I'm gonna stop him with a cow call. And uh I think he'd have walked right in our hip pocket, but Joe wanted to make it interesting, so he stopped him at four. <laughs> he stopped him at four. I think we could have got him to twenty eight before we stopped. <laughs> Joe, Joe just for testing your skills, huh? Go enough, brother. I didn't disappoint. <laughs> we sent it. After you have considered where you're going to set up according to wind, terrain, and vegetation, remember you have the advantage because now you're able and you're also considering shooting lanes. You want mm. multiple shooting lanes, but you want multiple shooting lanes in a way where you do not have long distance of view. Yep. Okay? That is if you're solo. If you're a solo archery hunter, again, it's different with a partner. And then here's what you need third, man. So we have our palette, we have our canvas, and now you got to pick the type of picture you want to paint. And let me tell you something. Luis was talking about you needed information, right, to know what to do. Like if we hear a party going on, uh, instead of getting ticked off, sometimes we'll just put our own party on, right? Yes. Uh, but you, when you start to put on a scenario there is a scenario that is going to bring satellite bulls and that's anytime a rut is occurring if a rut is occurring elk are going to come cows are going to come because if they hear a dominant bull they're going to come if they're they're going to pull a satellite with them and they're going to come to it so that's something that i want you to 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 think about okay so let's talk about scenarios but before i do I want you to hear some points I want you to remember. Number one, it's not paint by number. In other words, you're not going to say, oh, I got a cow call. Um, I've got a bugle. I've got a... It's not paint by number, man. 
You yeah. got to be dynamic in your tones. You got to be dynamic in your timing and your repetition. You got to be Bob Ross, man. Happy accidents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if I'm cow calling, and let's say I mess up a cow call, uh, if uh, let's say that was a mess up, but <laughs> <laughs> I can always. <laughs> No, let's, let's try it. Let's try Monano. Monano, go ahead. Yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. And then if I want to, if, I, if I'm really feeling elky, I might start. Hear the tone come down. You can hear different tones that are happening there. Feel it, man. Be dynamic. Be Bob Ross. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I just lay in it. I, I like I said, I I feel it coming on, and it, it, I don't know. It's like you said, you know. I'm sure a painter feels that way too. He gets in that groove, and he's throwing his stuff up, and you know, taking his little deal and doing. It. It's the same thing when we're yes. calling. You know, you feel the moment, and uh, you you know, as as an elk hunter, you know what the cows and the bulls want. So you just try to give them that. Like like you said, I mean, who wants to be around somebody going? Nah! Hey, like that you know nobody wants to be around that guy and the, you know? the, the thing i want to tell guys too is is don't overthink it, it exactly. it's kind of like if you start thinking about when you're swimming if you start thinking about the mechanics you it doesn't flow sometimes you just got to if you've done your practice and you get out there you do a scenario the way that you want your herd to be the way yeah. you hunt your situation to be they'll buy it man i'm yeah, telling them they'll buy it yeah do it 100 uh, because you don't have to be perfect you just yeah. got to speak the right language yeah, yeah you know man. You, you don't have yeah. to it don't have to sound like joe jilly or cameron haynes everybody's voice is different or jacobson or Look, no, we still but, speak the same language. The hoochie mama yeah. Yeah. Dude, lot of bulls, that sounds really good doesn't it yeah. Mm -hmm. been good. <laughs> yeah. All, all elk, elk, uh, Everybody likes them. There's not a standard mama. elk call, you know. No. Nope. All elk are different. They have a different pitch, different tone. Yeah, yeah. it's the same with their voices. Up. All of our voices yeah. are different. I was yeah. going to say we sp all speak the same language, but then I thought, Manano and I kind of don't. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to a listener this morning, and I told that listener, do me, do me a favor. I said, I want you to go on YouTube, and I want you to watch all the successful videos that are coming out right now. And I want you to listen to how each one of those guys are bugling, how each of them are cow calling, how what – they They're all different. sound so different. Man. Yeah. I mean, but they uh, work because it's yeah. the language. And and I'm not a big I, I'm not a big long noter. In other words, I don't like a front end long note. I don't mm -hmm. like a. I don't like that. Yeah. I'm just like an elk. Just like they just get to it. They just jump yeah. on it, right? And and I hear guys doing that, and it's just like me. I'm like ah, but that's the five tone bugle. Yeah. <laughs> There's all kinds, man. Yeah. All right. So point number two to remember, if you get a response, recognize what might have been the thing that pushed his butt yeah. and keep giving it, man. Yeah. Keep giving it. You, you know? got you, buddy. If you're doing a scenario, it doesn't mean, oh, okay, he responded to that lost cow call, but man, I I, I got this big bull call that I've got to do right. No. Yeah. Just give him what he wants. What he responded. Yeah, give yeah. him what he wants. Which which was also another hard lesson for me uh, this past year or this year's uh -huh. yeah. 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 It was there was one specific call that he was actually responding to, and I didn't concentrate on that one call. I kept on changing the <laughs> scenario. Number so. three is movement adds authenticity to the scenario over a ridge and back up a hill, mm -hmm. moving through a corridor. When you're moving and doing these sounds, it adds the authenticity. If yes. you're staying in one point and this bull is like screaming for one point, elk don't naturally do that unless they're bed and it's lazy ones. They might do mm -hmm. it from there or if they're mo if their cows are feeding. But that depends mm -hmm. on the time of day. you got to be uh -huh. natural to the environment. So think about that. Um, number four, do not. Yeah, and, and, and real quick there, Joe, 
don't worry about making noise as you're doing that. As no. long as they're not seeing you, go ahead and move some rocks and, you know, no. crack some branches as on the way because that's natural for them as well. You, you were talking about my Instagram post that I put out today that, no. that shows me raking. What you don't see is before that, there's like branches down on the ground. To get the branch I had, I just started stepping on stuff and I just started breaking stuff until I yeah. got the stick I wanted and then I used it to rake. Yeah. So as I was cow calling and doing different things. So it, it adds that authenticity, man. Um, do not engage directly. If you're doing a scenario, do not engage directly until your target bull has escalated. You will know. You will hear it in his voice. And people ask me, how do I know when they're angry? Trust me, man. You will hear it in their voice. It'll be like Gilbert said, man. Everything will come out the crack of your rear end because you know that dude's pissed. You can just hear it. It's hard, fast, scream, add in that reverberation. Man, when that happens, fish is on, okay? Um, yeah. Fifth point, group scenarios are fun, but be able to communicate and know your role. So it just kind of, if, if everybody understands all of this, it's easy. It's so much, it's our group is gonna be able to do incredible things because of the communication in knowing these scenarios. And like we said earlier, there are times to shut up and just let it happen, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. So our scenarios, Remember, these scenarios use our sketches either singularly or put together those sound bites to create. Our first scenario is a herd scenario. I had to use that this year to pull in Luis's bull. I tried being uh, a bull that was being aggressive and it was not working. It was actually too intimidating. Correct. We had so to change. I, yeah. So immediately I, it becomes a dynamic situation change to a herd scenario, walking off in the direction to pull that bull in the direction I wanted him. And we've talked about this, Joe, before, but I just want to make a quick annotation on that, is that we had the ability to see the elk react to the different calls, which was a huge advantage. So Joe was able to start making the calls, and I was looking through the binoculars at their reactions, and then gave that information back to Joe we decided to change the scenario because of the reaction that we were seeing wasn't what the one we wanted. And that's what was the game changer. At that point, they, they decided this one spike bull decided to come check it, check us out. Yeah. And, and you guys can't hear me, but like, uh, Manano, what is, what does this mean? Manano? That's a, that's a joke making fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bugle <laughs> that's a bugle yeah absolutely and then we have cow calls oh. yeah so well, and then we have distances yes absolutely but if if i if you're up in front of me and you see that that bull is reacting to the bugle all you have to do is turn to me and just tell me bugle right yeah. You can just tell me, cow calling, that's what you guys were doing. And you can say, just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. So if I can see my hunter, a lot of times they can just signal because they are seeing what's happening with the bull. And they can just hold up just for something so that they can kind of tell me and I can get an idea of what's going on. What's going on. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you read my, my, my body language as well. Oh, Manano. I see Manano drawn back. Manano is at full draw, and he's at full draw, and he's at full draw. So what does that tell me? Bull's hung up. Yeah. He needs to take a step, right? So I cow call. And yeah, and that was a perfect timing, Joe. Yeah. Uh, I'm, when when I, I hear I that cow call, and the, right. yeah, I mean, when I heard that cow call, the, the bull start walking, I said, Thank you, Joe. <laughs> he was, oh, he stopped. I mean, behind a, behind of a little uh, pain. Uh, it, no, it was a pine. Uh, I don't know. It was a little brush. Uh -huh. brush. Oh my goodness! I was praying. I was praying for that the call call to it come. Like you were drawn back for a long time, dude. I mean, it just seemed like that. So, so the herd scenario is the first one. The the next scenario, guys. <laughs> I, I don't hear much people doing this, and it's something I do all the time, is the be the bull scenario. And 
you know, the hurt scenario can be both static and dynamic where you're moving. The be the bull scenario is dynamic. It's moving. In other words, a lot of times you get out there and, and bulls just aren't lit up. They're just not talking. And I truly believe that what gets bulls talking sometimes are other bulls talking. So I will start being the bull. I'll be the dude. If they don't want to talk, I'll be the talker. So I will act like a bull going to my destination. Mm. I'll start heading up a ridge, man, and I'm doing that that location, that location, yeah. that location. I'm throwing out a few cow calls as I'm doing it, that location, as I'm going up the ridge. And what we have had happen is me and Chab are together, and all of a sudden bulls start showing up from the side, man. They <laughs> pinpoint your speed and direction, and they start coming into you. Or you top so out, cool. and then they come up over top to you. It's worked, hasn't it, Chav? Oh, yeah, plenty mm -hmm. of time. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty solid thing. And you can do the same thing. You can be an advertising bull. You can be Betty in the afternoon and just start advertising, man. Just do that bull from the bed call. Be the bull. Drum up the other stuff, man. Make it happen, okay? Um, the other scenario is our snubbing cow, okay? And what I mean by the snubbing cow is this could be static or dynamic. And this is a cow that is not coming to a bull. He, that, now, you can call yourself to a bull using a cow call, but if I have a static situation and I want that bull to come to me, then I'm going to snub him. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a bull. I'm going to start with low bull sounds. I'm going to use raking. I'm going to use pants. I'm going to use those types of things that are going to kind of introduce a bull into the area or just raking. Uh, you know, if I don't want it to seem like a breeding bull, I just might go to a raking, you know, like that, and maybe even a little bit of glunking. Um, dueling bulls, that can be static or dynamic, which is two or multiple escalating bulls, herd bulls with satellites, all of those um, modules that we talked about, all those sketches that you could put together for dueling bulls. And then we have what we call our big daddy scenario, which is the dominant bull or a dominant bull with cows, calling the cows to bring the bull. So that, you know, you want, you're in a situation where a bull has cows and he doesn't want to come to you. He's a herd bull and he doesn't want to come to you. And you don't, you, if you start going after him aggressively, it's going to be fight or flight. Well, start playing with his cows, man. Start bringing them in. Um, the breeding bull scenario, we've talked about that already. A bull with a hot cow where you're doing those breeding sounds. But here's the thing that I like to do is I, I like to take my breeding bull scenario and introduce a cow pickle. Yeah. Yeah, so, back and forth. Yeah. So yep. ha have you guys ever, if you play baseball, you know what pickle is, right? Absolutely. Like guy in the middle, right? Okay. Yep. So what I do is I start to sound like that breeding bull, and then I start sounding like I start moving towards the bull as a cow, a lost cow that's coming his way, mm -hmm. and an easy target for him to pick up. You know, hey, baby, what you yeah. doing? Right? What's your sign, mama? <laughs> and then our, our last scenario is our rut fest, okay? Mm -hmm. So our rut fest is basically... I love that one. That, that's where it's all blowing up. There's you yeah. can hear bulls going off. You hear a lot of lip balls. You can hear so much fun. And you do it. If you do it with the three, four of us, man, it's oh, just man. a blast. Yeah, it is. <laughs> absolutely. Cool. Man. And it's, it's static because you, you're all set up. You're just trying yeah. to kind of, you know, let them come in. And well, it, is, it is static, but you can get it dynamic too, especially when you know over a rise there's some bulls down there. Sure. You yeah. want them to get to you. So you kind of got to get in that, man, if they you poke your head up over the ridge, see what they're doing. <laughs> make sure you got the sun in front of you and not or behind you. Oh, behind you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On your back. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to use a decoy, yeah, it's hard to test them behind you. But let me tell you what, yeah. the perfect situation, listen, guys, when you're hunting elk is wind in your face, sun at your back. No doubt. Yeah. Wind in your face, no sun at your back. I'll never forget that, Joe. You said that yeah. when we were in the squeaky forest. Yeah. And, uh, man, we were walking through the squeaky forest, and you said, man, you know, guys, 
this is the perfect situation. This is what you want. You want the sun in your face, uh, the, the wind in your face and the sun in your back. Yeah. And man, yeah. we must have taken 10 steps after you said that. I and remember we had that, that bull come in. And then shortly after that, we had the bear come in. It was just an unbelievable morning. So yeah. I will never that's forget un- that uh, lesson. That's an unbelievable area. That's a beautiful yeah. memory. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was it was it was really, really awesome. And and I, I know there's a question out there most likely that our listeners are asking themselves is well when you put on a scenario, how long do you do it? You know, and one thing oh, I long as you want. As long as you want. Yeah. And Joe, you, know. you I thought you were gonna run out of breath. When you pull my minutes. bull in, forty-five minutes. <laughs> forty-five minutes. You yeah. call. I was telling Manano. I at that exact point, I was telling Manano. I was like, Manano, let's go back to Joe and tell him to stop it. I mean, it's it's done. We're done here. And right when I was telling Manano that, we saw that you know calf come in with a cow behind and a bull behind, and we're like, holy crap! Here we go. Something's happening. And just when we thought it was all done for, mm-hmm. I mean, that's when. That's when it all happened. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's even, you know, go ahead, Gilbert. Yeah, no, when I killed a bull two years ago, we'd given up on that bull and we had been oh, rolling him for yeah. 30, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And I mean, it was getting late and, uh, you know, we were just about done. I, Joe said, hey, man, everybody get together. And I walked up to him and I said, do I hear that bull coming down through there? I can hear him glunking. And I said, I think he's down in that water. And Joe said, well, hang on just a second. He get a little roundup bugle or, uh, yeah, a lost cow call. I'm sorry, lost cow call. And that bull just blew up <laughs> right in our face down there. And I said, Joe looked at me and goes, hmm, well, let's see what he does. So, I mean, we're getting ready to give up. I mean, we were up against something, too, that our listeners don't know. I mean, the heat, we had a barrier between us. And so it wasn't like we could go much further, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. But it is what it is. And uh, Joe put him on a string because he was patient. And uh, and then once we got him into range, he did typically what a bull does. He'd come uphill, which they don't typically do. But we called him uphill and then got there to that apex. You know, he's seven foot taller than you are when you're on the ground. Oh, and, uh, I mean, and this is the first time I ever got to shoot a bull standing up. We were actually standing in the in the uh, the aspens, and uh, I was standing next to an aspen, and I know that aspen was shading me because of my good buck crew camo. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hide so well behind those trees. And I had I had my seen I, had, I had the man with me, the elk ninja uh, that was giving my range. The man, Chav, Chav Chavez, and. Uh, you know, Joe was on my right side and with the camera and everything. And he was calling too. And uh, that bull stood off with us forever, you yeah. know, did a full standoff. And we, but we never lost focus. I think if we would have done anything different, he blows up, you know, right. uh, because he knew the scenario was like puzzling him. You know, he was puzzled with it. No, I, okay, I heard all these elk up here. Where the hell are they? I, I think a point I want to make sure that I make people know, too, is we talk about static and dynamic. Understand, too, that you can have a situation that's dynamic and go into a static. Like, uh, right. Chab, mm-hmm. you remember um, we were at uh, one canyon and we had the bull and his cows that were going up the hill over by Carl's place when we were camping there. And they were going up the hill and we were just chasing them up that steep hill, up that steep hill. And then they got to their destination on top. And so once they got to their destination and we got on top with them, now we had a situation where we got to pick and then try to bring them from where they were in their destination to us. And uh, we had a little group of Aspens. There was some water there and Chad was set up and I just started, you know, putting on a little scenario and that bull ended up coming right into us in that area. And uh, he met his fate that day. Uh, because he, you know, it, it just, it works, man, when, when you do that and you got to be willing to push their bubble sometimes. And if you're able to, if you're not, then you got to bring them to you and you can't do this, man. I, I want every guy to know and every girl to know that does this, that calls elk. I want everybody to know that if you get an elk 
to respond to you and they come in the distance you won. I'm going to tell you straight up, whether you kill him or not, you win. Cause yeah. fooling one of them critters Absolutely. is epic. Absolutely. Uh, they are so good at understanding danger. They live in it every day. Everything out there is trying yeah. to kill them and survivors. It, yeah. So build on that, <clears throat> build on your calling, build on your confidence you know, okay, we might be weak in one area or weak on another area, but man, whatever works for you and if you get them to respond and you get them in and you close the distance and you get an opportunity, you did it. And you yeah. can do it every time after that if Absolutely. you just understand the language, man. If, if yeah. I may, Beto, to sure. add to that, you know, and I'm going to just venture out to say this. I think, I honestly think Elbro's success comes from Joe's ability, Gilbert's ability, Chav's ability to understand elk behavior and call them in and create opportunities. If a listener or somebody watching on YouTube can pick up on that, man, it's just like, please do. Because what you're hearing on these last couple podcasts are on the YouTube channel. It's the juice. It's absolute success. The reason for Elbro's success. It's, it's all here. You can tell just by listening to the passion in which Joe talks about elk calling and, and, and how he just feels about this. I mean, we've had so much content that it had to be broken up in different podcasts. Yeah. So just for a week too, man, Yeah, this so is gold. I <laughs> understand this is gold. Well, I mean, if you, if you just capitalize on this and we've given we it to you, yeah, we've given it to you how we only do it. Yeah. And we have, Joe and I've been hunting together for 12 years, known each other for 12 years, been hunting together for 10. And I'm telling you, we've been uber successful at being in that 10% category, right? Joe's been doing it for 30 some odd years and been a hundred percent successful. But it's because he can speak the language, man. The same with Chab. When I broke off and got to start hunting with Chab, it really took me to the next level. Not to mention, he don't walk in circles like Joe does. <laughs> at the end of this the is smart. This is really smart. At the right. end of the day, Chab, Chab could hear that I was getting better in my sounds. Okay, I, he could hear that. Oh man, you sound like the master. You know, you sound. A, a little bit like him and you keep going, it's going to get better. And then he would tell me, okay, give a little of this, give a little of that, that the first two years that I got to hunt with him, that honed that. And then, you know, the Just first took world, you to a whole different level, better, way different right? level. Right. right. And there is not a scenario that I feel like that I get into either by myself or with Chad or with Joe, where we can't win. Yeah. You know, now, what do you we, think the most understand. important thing is then when, I mean, when you're following Gilbert behind, what, what do you from, because you were basically teaching him, you don't do a lot of calling, but you've been behind me all this time. And what was it that, that you were trying to get across to him when he was doing his calling in his scenarios? Well, I think a lot of, you know, situational calling, you know, when, when to call and uh, you know, when to be aggressive, when not to be, and with Gilbert, uh, you know, he had the fundamentals down pretty good. It was just a matter of getting confidence. And I could see it the, the more he did it, the more confident he got. But a lot of it was, you know, he, he, has, he had so much in his palate and he increased it. You know, I could see it increasing, you know, daily, actually. So it was just a matter of the, the scenario and, and uh, you know, when to call when to use a call call when to use the bugle and, and so forth mm -hmm. and i and like gilbert says i think to this point you know i'm real confident that if he sees an elk first he's going down <laughs> unless somebody makes a major mistake you know along it's, the way. it's like when you're teaching somebody how to drive i mean he you know chav is sitting there in the co-pilot seat yeah and looking at the whole picture and saying, you know, accelerate, slow down, yeah. just watch out for the car on your left, watch out for the car on your right. You're just guiding, you know, Beto through the, I mean, it just exponentially grew Beto's ability to call in elk, which, you know, it's just, it's amazing nowadays. And, 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 
in the year that I painted the Sistine Chapel, no doubt, when I had we had all them bulls sitting next to us. I am not lying, guys. You talk about you could have dropped a bomb in there and blowed that thing up. It, it was so epic. I, I'm I'm more proud of that Colin scenario killing that raghorn bull than I am of any bull I've ever killed because we did it together and we did it with bulls on us at less than twelve feet and got it done. And I, I, so, like I said, when I painted the Sistine Chapel there, we got to go back. OK, we, we finished our elk hunt and everything. And we got to go back to look for my hat that the bear ate and stole. And when we went back up there, Joe, I got to sit in a herd of elk for at least an hour and a half. Yeah. And and trade blows with some really big bulls. When there's no pressure and you just get to enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. I. I I got more out of that. That is so cool. Sitting, calling those animals, me and Chavs. And, and I mean, we didn't have video camera one, nothing. I mean, it was just us and the bulls and the cows and being able to switch from talking to the bulls to talk to the cows, to bring them closer. And then the bulls going, Oh no, you ain't going up there by them bulls and then rounding them all up and everything. It was Again, we spend a lot of time in the woods yeah. observing those critters and understanding their language. Sure. And if you guys think you're just going to be able to do it, you know, one, one, you know, one time when you go up in there, yeah, like Joe said, every, every blind hog can find an acre. But to do this consistently, right, like we have over the past five years in public land hunting, knocking down, you know, 75, 85 percent of, uh, of us, some of us are 100 percent every time we walk in the woods. At the end of the day, man, that's special. We're giving y'all the juice. Everybody says, hey, l lay everything out, but I want the juice, right? I want I want the real deal, the juice. Y'all got it. That's it, man. Yeah. There's no secret pill that you're going to eat to go kill a big bull. You're going to have to speak the language and learn how to talk, elk talk, if you want to kill a bull with an archery, and you, with archery equipment. You get it every week. Yeah, man. Get it every week, cause not these just guys once are that a year, good. not once a year. Every you know, for for whatever, however long your hunt. Is. <laughs> when Joe crazy. and I talked about elk bros, we were like, man, what could we do to have elk camp every week? You know, hell with spending a, a you know a week a year together. What can we do to give back to our listeners? And Joe, in his infinite wisdom, said. Man, let's, what do you think about a podcast? And I'm like, hell, they pay me to talk. Hell, I can talk the leg <laughs> off a wooden Indian. You know, absolutely. Let's do it, Joe. You know, I can act dumb and be myself. And, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we can help our listeners and, you know, have the, ben I mean, look, the Venezuelan mafia is born out of this. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, it's true. Uh, awesome. ch Chad beating cancer. I mean, we all played a part in that with him. That's you know? beautiful. Right? Beautiful it's journey. Been for sure. It's been a, it's been an awesome yeah. freaking journey. Like I said, a million times fold. I I fight hell with a water pistol with these guys. But man, I'm passionate about calling elk, fellas. You know, that's mm -hmm. why I see Waddy on the TV. He loves it. You know, he loves calling elk. I guarantee you, when Joe Gilly and himself was standing right next to the bone collector, he was like, "Man, I would thought I could call an elk." Ooh, boy, I mean. Oh, so that he knows we the he real deal, talk. man. He can talk. You know? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. So uh, we're going to have to get out of here. We're getting ready. To, uh, we're we're hitting on the time, and what we're going to do next week is, uh, I know a bunch of you are going to have questions from what you heard because if you really listen to some of this, the juices are flowing, and there's going to be questions. Get the questions into us asap. We're going to start out our show next week with our Elk Bros mailbox because I've we've got we yes. got Tim, we got Scott, we got Ed Norris, we got Drew Sayer. We got some great questions here. Yes, very that good. This content hasn't allowed us because I did not want to just. I mean, we actually did. Run, I'm telling you, the content we just went through, we could talk about for two weeks, y'all. I mean, we're honest to God. I, I mean, we could hit each one of these things and talk well, about. Brother it. Joe, I got the time. If you want to do two of them tonight, we can knock out two right now. I got the time. <laughs> I don't. I've got the. We're, we're going to celebrate Chav's birthday tomorrow. Oh. oh. 
It's Trav's birthday. Trav's birthday. Well, it's actually Saturday, but yeah. It's actually well, the 27th, Joe. Yeah, it's, yeah, I know when it you is. You got to get I, your friend's I, birthday I, right. I, I, I'm up at Vermejo Park, so we're doing it a little early at the house. So. Oh, I got oh, you. He's at the mecca of the elk industry, Vermejo <laughs> Park. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to take care of that. So, guys, that's what we're going to do next time. And uh, uh, yeah, and real quick, in. So, some of the emails we get as well, we try to answer uh, most of those on email. And Mr. Drew Sawyer, um, you know, appreciate all your insight, man. Super, super cool questions. And I try to, you know, respond to, to, your, to your questions there on the arrow builds and stuff like yeah, that. Dude. Keep them coming, man, that we love that stuff. We, we make the time just to make sure that we respond to you guys. And it, it might yeah. take us a while, y'all, because of everything yeah. that, that – we get but um if you think we've forgotten you or miss you yeah. because sometimes i can't remember if i got a question from instagram or from my gmail or if i got yeah. it from my i get them from so many places man so joe we getting them from college professors tim regger uh at the end of the day yeah. man that's awesome these guys you talk about uh guys that are in the know and understanding oh yeah behavior well, we're actually going like to have that. drew on a show so drew's going to oh be cool great, so we're going to do yeah. that so yeah. all right man let's close yeah, this out dude. joe you know what guys we talk about this all the time if you like what we're doing please subscribe rate and review you got to go to apple podcast or itunes to review us and you can check out more elk hunting content at elkbros.com just a reminder if any of our listeners would like their questions answered on our show. And if Big O don't talk too much, just send <laughs> this question to info at elkbros.com. That's info at elkbros.com. Fellas, this was the juice tonight. Listeners, uh, elk hunters, uh, elk bros and buttettes, I'm telling you, this was it. So you guys, if y'all have friends of yours, like we said in the opening, y'all better tell them to download this podcast and listen to it over and over joe and the crew did not disappoint man like we say down here in texas husbands kiss your wives wives kiss your husbands keep your broad head sharp and your powder dry and we'll see you next week right here on blue collar elk y'all can hug your babies too peace peace yeah. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. <laughs> peace. <laughs>